Good day. Today's presentation is titled, Remedies to Supply Chain Headaches, Innovating Critical Process Manufacturing Oversight. I'm Courtney Stevens, an attorney at Menmark's Loss Control Department. On behalf of Menmark and today's presenter, Joseph Pinto, thank you for joining us. Joseph G. Pinto started his career at Sherwin-Williams Company in Crisfield, Maryland as a mechanical and industrial engineer and proceeded to hold positions of increasing responsibility as material manager, plant manager, and director of manufacturing for their specialty products division. After two short stints as Vice President of Operations at two privately held companies in Massachusetts and Seoul, Korea, he joined PPG in 1987 and was assigned as plant manager of their Ontario, Canada coding plant. In 1991, he moved to Tokyo to serve as Director of Business Development. In the Asia-Pacific region, he went on to hold a series of leadership assignments in Jakarta, Hong Kong, Melbourne, and Shanghai during the time PPG was establishing their coding business in the region. His last assignment in the region was Managing Director for, Managing Director for Coatings Asia Pacific. He returned to the U.S. in 2005 as Global Director of Operations for, for, for Performance Coatings, a position he held until his retirement from PPG in 2010. On August 16, 2010, Mr. Pinto assumed the role of Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the Performance Review Institute. He comes to PRI with an impressive industrial career and broad global experience. He has a demonstrated track record of successfully leading complex organizations and achieving strategic growth objectives. Joe received his Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Sri Lanka and his Master of Science degree, degree in Industrial Engineering from Purdue University. PRI administers the NADCAP program, which audits and accredits special process suppliers to the global aerospace industry. With that, I am pleased to turn things over to Joe, who will begin today's presentation. Thank you, Courtney and thanks for joining uh, today's webinar. Today we'll cover the, uh, an innovative approach used by the medical device industry for overseeing the critical manufacturing supply chain based on a model that has been used by the aerospace industry. The agenda will cover how, uh, how poor critical process supply chain management presents problems for the medical device companies, then role of the supply chain management in the FDS case for quality, how the industry can use aerospace as an example in setting up a model for critical process supply chain oversight, and then we look at effective strategies for oversight based on the aerospace model. And then finally, how we can leverage the aerospace strategies for medical device industry. First, what issues are being faced by the medical device industry in critical process supply chain oversight? We have a few examples that we've taken out from the FDA website, which talks about recalls that have happened due to some of the defective processing or some of the defective specification for special critical manufacturing processes. This one is a tibial articular surface insert, a class two, 360 units were recalled, and the, the defect identified was either not heat treating to induce the hardness, hardness in the tip, or doing a wrong process so that the deformation of the tip was happening because it wasn't done properly. The second one is a, a ventilator, class two ventilator, 46 units recalled by FDA, and the defect was a CPU circuit board, and that, that defect could result in blacking out the display or loss of mechanical ventilation. Again, it points to a critical process either that wasn't performed properly. The third one is 193 cases of six each of a sterile anti-multifunction electrode that was recalled due to improper sterilization using gamma radiation at a different level than what was required. So these are three examples that, that we pulled out of 
the FDA website, among many that was there, that points out to critical process oversight, lack of critical process oversight that led to defective products and recalls. So we asked the industry, the OEMs and the CMs, as well as the suppliers, to identify the critical process pro um, area problems that they say in the medical device industry. So the OEMs and CMs point out to the fact that it is difficult to try to identify and eliminate all critical process problems because of the breadth and the level, various levels of the supply chain that these critical process suppliers operate. They also point out the difficulty of not having a practical way to visibly see what is happening at the, the lower tier supply chain, especially the second, third, fourth tier suppliers. And it's difficult for them to see what, what they're doing and how effective they're working. Another point that they, that they have identified is the difficulty in communication, communicating to all levels of the supply chain, their requirements. You know, how do you know who is doing the, the heat treating of a, a, a unit which may be done by a fourth tier supplier? And how do you make sure that your requirements have been flowed down to that supplier by the other sub tier suppliers that are doing other high level processes? So from the supplier standpoint, the suppliers feel that they have difficulty understanding and obtaining customer requirements. They don't know sometimes who the ultimate customer is. Also, they face difficulty because every time they get an order, it's, it's a rush order and they don't have enough time to try to dwell into it and try to understand what the requirements for processing are and to understand whose product it is and what requirements they should process it to. And the third point they said is they have difficulty communicating to resolve issues when they face issues such as not knowing the, the industry specification or the OEM requirement, they, they have difficulty getting those things resolved because sometimes they don't know who to communicate with. So the results of poor supply chain management leads to problems with patient safety as a result of poor product quality and result in recalls which damaged the reputation of the company and the, the brand for the manufacturer, added costs for recalls as well as corrective actions, opportunities that are lost for growing their business, and loss of productivity. Also, it results in increased product cost because of additional inspection and oversight that is required because the, the supply chain management is not robust, and also leading to additional scrap and waste. So the approach that has been identified by the industry and worked on over the last few years focuses on critical process management by auditing and accreditation in addition to the general quality focus that every company should have, every supply should have. The general QMS audits usually cover a broad aspect of quality issues throughout the company, but do not do an in-depth job of understanding the processes and making sure that they are doing those processes, critical processes, properly. To, in order to do that, you need subject matter experts to do the audit. You cannot have a general generalist who is a general quality auditor, go and do an in-depth audit on circuit board assemblies or manufacturing of circuit boards or heat treating. You need a subject matter technical expert in order to do that. And also you need to be able to oversee the entire manufacturing operation from purchase order through to final inspection for that process. And also, we've got to make sure 
that specification and requirement flow down to the customers are happening, that this critical process supplier is receiving proper flow down of requirements from the higher tiers or from even the OEM or the contract manufacturer. And also we need to do, they need to do a proper contract review to clearly understand what is expected. The industry managed group has identified these processes as critical to the medical device manufacturing. Some of these are covered in, you know, in uh, uh, aerospace as well, but these are generally a list of processes that the industry has identified as being critical. Some of the things that are common to these processes is that it is difficult to verify whether the, whether the product has been processed properly afterwards. For example, if you heat treat a part, you cannot determine whether it has been heat treated to the proper specification without destroying that part. Same thing applies to welding or some other, uh, some other processes that are identified here. So it is critical that we make sure the process is done properly because it's difficult to verify by inspecting the product that the process has been done properly. So what are the key elements that are necessary for good critical process management? First, you need to have an understanding from the suppliers of the impact of their process on the final product. If they don't know what the final product is, sometimes it's difficult to have that. That's why the, supply, the whole supply chain visibility is important. Somebody that is doing heat treating for a component, uh, let's say an orthopedic implant, at the fourth or fifth tier level need to understand how what they do impact the final product. And to do that, you need to be able to communicate properly and have good transparency of what is happening, what are the requirements, and what are the industry standards, and what are the OEM best practices that are expected from them. Leading to understanding what are the industry standards and best practices. And from there, there has to be a good, robust contract review at every level. The, the supplier needs to be able to identify exactly what they are expected to do, not only product specs, but also processing specs. And once they know that, they need to have a good validation planning and execution for their process process validation to make sure that it is being done properly. And in order to do that, you need to have subject matter expert, experts, technical experts with critical process knowledge to conduct audits at these suppliers to make sure they're doing it properly. And all that leads to accreditation by a third party, but from an industry, industry managed perspective, classifying the supplier as somebody that is capable of doing what is required for that process, what the industry requires from that process. Then also the industry group has to work on continually improving this so that the process, particular process, is continuing to improve and perform better on behalf of the industry. Next we look at the role of supply chain management in FDA's case for quality. The industry managed program for critical process management was designed with the intent of lining up and supporting the FDA's case for quality, quality initiative. So the strategic priorities that identify CDRH of the FDA, one of them is to promote a culture of quality and organization excellence. And in that, one of the goals is 
strengthen product and manufacturing quality within the medical device ecosystem. There are strategic priorities for that goal. Identify, collaborate with members of the medical device ecosystem. So they, FDA would like to have collaborative approach with the, the, the medical device system manufacturers, contract manufacturers, as well as suppliers in order to achieve the, the manufacturing quality that they're looking for. They also identify external partnerships and mechanisms to su support a sustainable voluntary third party program. So not only do they want to collaborate with the industry, but also they want to identify and partner with programs, third party programs that would lead to better quality in manufacturing. Thirdly, FDA want policies wants to identify policies and practice that will encourage adoption of these best practices and manufacturing quality initiatives. So the industry managed critical process management program has been developed to align with those initiatives, critical to quality initiatives from the FDA. The industry managed program is focused on ensuring compliance to critical manufacturing process requirements. And it is a collaborative approach because we bring in the manufacturers, the contract manufacturers and the suppliers to work together in a collaborative environment and use technical experts to identify what the requirements are. So if you look at the case for quality initiative, there are six items that have been identified. And on the right, we point out how the industry managed, industry led initiative that we are talking about aligns with those case for quality initiatives. First one is enhanced focus on quality while maintaining compliance. The industry managed approach encourages the suppliers to prepare for the audits by doing internal audits using the audit criteria that has been developed by the industry. I will explain later on how the industry develops the audit criteria. But it's once the in industry technical experts develop the audit criteria, it is available free of charge for the suppliers to download and the program encourages and requires them to use those audit criteria in order to prepare and do internal audits in preparation for a special process, critical process audit. Second, promotion of root cost approach to quality challenge. The program requires in-depth root cost analysis and establishment of sustainable corrective actions in order to receive accreditation. If a supplier going through the audit is, has non-conformances, then they have to do root cost corrective action in order to be able to close that non-conformance. They have to be able to identify root causes and then implement sustainable corrective actions before they can obtain accreditation. In addition, training is provided to support the program by PRI who is administering the program. Third one is enhanced transparency. Again, the industry managed program has a web-based audit management software where all the corrective actions, the non-conformances are entered into so that it, it is visible to the subscribing manufacturers and contract manufacturers. So it enhances transparency. They see the non-conformances, they see how the corrective action process works, and these, they see all the sustainable corrective actions that have been established and put in place by the supplier. The program also has an early warning system. If during an audit, an auditor finds a potential 
process problem that could lead to a defect, it is communicated to all the subscribing OEMs and CMs. Fourth one is stakeholder engagement. Again, OEMs, CMs, and suppliers all collaborate in addressing and they communicate and identify the audit criteria and address quality issues collectively. Fourth, fifth one is regulatory focus on preventive quality practices. Integrating the audit criteria into the day-to-day -day operations by the suppliers in preparation for audit in doing internal audits helps them create a proactive quality culture that prevents quality defects from happening as well as it helps them standardize operating procedures. Last one is critical to quarterly methodology. The industry managed programs ensures compliance to critical manufacturing process, thereby making sure that critical to quality methodology is being adhered to. Advermed has a case for quality library. It's a compilation of successful quality practices employed by contributing Advermed member companies. The library provides a selection of current industry practices with explanation of their value. This can serve as a roadmap or a toolkit for companies seeking to improve their quality system and or product quality by leveraging proven industry methods. The industry managed program that was developed by the, the, the medical device OEMs, the industry, has been included as an example of good quality practices in this case for quality library. Next I will look at how the aerospace industry can serve as a model for medical device industry. Medical, de medical device industry and aerospace industry have many similarities. Both industries are focused on quality and safety because it's very, very important to both industries. Both have life critical products, parts and components. Aerospace has many flight critical parts. That failure of those could lead to life threatening situations. Same thing is similar in the medical device industry. If the parts are defective, it could threaten life of the patient or the patient's health. Both industries have critical manufacturing processes, processes that are critical to making good products of which inspection is difficult after they have been made, they have been processed. Both industries have critical process supply chain. They don't do all the critical processes themselves. The manufacturers don't do it. A lot of them are done by suppliers of various tiers and have complex multi-tiered global supply chain. Aerospace has products manufactured in many part, any different parts of the world by different, many, uh, different suppliers. And many critical processes are done by suppliers in different parts of the world at different levels. Both have strict regulatory oversight and the cost of failure is very high. As an example of the aerospace industry, why it is important to focus on critical processes as as opposed to inspecting parts is given here. This is taken from Boeing website. If you look at the number of parts going into making a Boeing plane, it varies from 400,000 for 737 to 6 million parts for 747. And Boeing procures 783 million parts in one year. It's needless to say you cannot inspect every one of them. If you look at a fighter jet or a space shuttle or a, a rocket that goes to Mars, they're all part of the aerospace industry. They have sometimes millions of parts. 
So you have to find a way to make sure that the critical parts that go into these planes or space shuttles are processed properly. It's difficult to inspect every one of them. So you have to focus on the processing. What are the critical processes that go into making the flight critical parts? In order to do that, aerospace industry started the NADCAP program. It started as a defense department, defense program initially. The industry focuses on managing the critical manufacturing process supply chain, making sure those processes that are critical to flight critical parts are done properly. So the industry established NADCAP in 1990. It's an industry-managed accreditation program for the global aerospace industry. What NADCAP does is it verifies that an audited company has the process capability, necessary equipment, controls, qualified personnel, and sub-tier controls if they are farming out any of those critical processes to a downstream supplier. To follow process requirements as defined by industry standards and or OEM requirements. So they assess the capability and then validate actual compliance. Not only does the audit assess the supplier's capability, but also it's validated that the supplier is producing parts, processing parts in compliance with the requirements. NADCAP has over 7,500 global supply accreditations, conducts 5,500 audits per year, and 85%, if you take the top 100 aerospace companies in the world, a listing compiled by PricewaterhouseCoopers in 2014, more than 85% of those companies participate in the NADCAP program. An aerospace NADCAP program has 17 critical processes that are being audited and accredited to. The suppliers that participate in the NADCAP programs, they, they come to NADCAP meetings, they participate in the task groups, they participate in management council, and they are the ones that are being audited. And they believe 86% of the suppliers during the last supplier survey done by the Supplier Support Committee of NADCAP, 86% of them credit NADCAP program with improving quality in the aerospace system. Next slide shows some of the OEM subscribers to the NADCAP program. They are the they are world's uh, who's who of the aerospace industry from the defense contractors like Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics to airframe manufacturers such as Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, and Embraer, to engine manufacturers such as Rolls-Royce, GE Aviation, and Pratt & Whitney. This slide shows some data that's been shared by one of the subscribing OEMs in the aerospace industry. It shows the tracking of special process escapes. In the aerospace industry, a defect, a special process defect that escapes the factory or the, 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 the facility where the processing is done and it goes downstream is called an escape. And this OEM, this is a very large OEM in the aerospace industry, has tracked the escapes from their suppliers as well as their own facilities. Some of these OEMs have their own special processing capability and they do some internal and some of them, they farm out some of the work. 
So the green portion is the escapes from their own facilities, and the orange one is the escapes from their suppliers that are doing special processes. And they've seen over the nine years a 78% decrease in the special process escapes. And they, they uh, credit NADCAP for their reduction. NADCAP, again, is a truly global program focused on the supply chain anywhere in the world. As you can see, the audits are done throughout the world. In Australia, in, in South Africa, to Russia, even Russia. We do about 55% audits of these audits are done in North America, about 30% in Europe, and about Asia is increasing. It's around 17% right now. So how do you develop an effective strategy for medical device oversight, medical device supply oversight, based on the aerospace industry success? What are the critical steps? First, you've got to identify what are the critical manufacturing process technologies that are used in the medical industry where a process failure could result in defect affecting patient safety, defect affecting a defective product, and ultimately patient safety. And of course, you can't handle all of them at once. So then you need to prioritize these processes so that you can start handling one at a time. Then for each of these processes, you've got to separately address requirements based on industry standards and best practices. You need to identify what are the requirements that the supplier has to meet based on industry standards and OEM requirements as well as industry best practices for each one of these processes, and it has to be done by technical experts. Then following the NADCAP methodology, you have to validate the supply chain's capability and compliance at all tiers. The process works in this format for each critical process. First, you've got to develop audit criteria. The audit criteria is developed by experts from OEMs and CMs. Remember, this is for each critical process area. So in, if it is heat treating, if it is PCBA, you have to have PCBA technical experts from OEMs and CMs and PCBA suppliers that have extensive knowledge. Getting together with the PRI staff engineers that are experienced in those, these areas to establish audit criteria. And audit criteria are documents containing questions to determine compliance to establish industry standards and OEM requirements. Next, you have to identify and hire qualified auditors. The auditors have to be subject matter experts. You cannot have a general quality auditor go and audit a critical process. You have to have a critical process technical expert to do the audit, subject matter expert. An audit criteria list or a checklist in the hands of an, a non-process expert is not that effective. The criteria, audit criteria in the hands of an expert who has been doing that process, who's been an expert in that process for many years, makes it makes for a really comprehensive audit, in-depth audit. The SME's auditors are selected and approved by the, the industry technical experts who form task groups. Each technical area, the people that work on determining audit criteria as well as conduct, uh, selecting auditors are grouped into what we call task groups. 
And they are the ones that determine audit criteria as well as they are the ones that determine what qualification that the auditor should have and ultimately they are the ones that interview and approve these auditors. The auditors have usually have considerable experience up to 30 years in that process they are auditing and PRI conducts training with them on web-based training as well as by having them go on training audits. Once the audit criteria has been developed and the audit has been selected and a supplier signs up for an audit and the auditor is sent to conduct this audit. As I pointed out er earlier, this is an in-depth process audit. So the auditor, as I pointed out for NADCAP, verifies that the supplier has the process capability, equipment controls, personnel qualified in order to meet all the requirements and, and through job audits validates actual compliance. As a, you know, as a metaphor, you can say that the critical process audits are a mile deep and only an inch wide because you're focusing on that particular process, not on the company. Whereas a QMS audit is a, a broad audit that focuses on the whole company's compliance to a quality process, not the, not the processing of what they do. The critical process audits are, consist, consist of three parts. First, the auditor verifies that the supplier has a good QMS, not for the whole company, but also makes sure that it is being used effectively for the process being audited. Let's say a, a company has machining, heat treating, plating, non-destructive testing, they do all these things. And if that's the case, they needed to be accredited for each critical process. So the auditor doing a heat treating audit will focus only on the heat treating. It'll be an in-depth two to five day audit happening most of it inside the actual manufacturing area and doing these three, three things. First, verifying they have a good QMS and it's being effectively used for that process. Number two, goes to the audit criteria, the audit checklist, and verifies the supplier has the, the capability to meet all the industry standards and the OEM requirements. Then they do jo actual job audits, but they are process-focused job audits. The job audits is to make sure that that part has been processed properly in that critical process. It has been done properly. Next. So once the auditor finishes his work, he uploads the information into a web-based system that PRI has developed called eAuditNet and it's electronically recorded. The auditor will submit the checklists that are completed, attachments, anything else that he needs to write up, and if they have any non-conformances, if they found any non-conformances, they will identify those, and they will also give a grading, whether it's a major non-conformance or a minor non-conformance. A major non-conformance is if something is systemic. If they find a, a non-conformance that is systemic throughout that operation, then it becomes a major. Number two is if that non-conformance could lead to a potential defect, it is also categorized as a major. The others are, you know, procedural things usually end up being minor non-conformances. Once the audit report is submitted, the auditor's job is finished. Unlike an ISO audit where the supplier works with the auditor 
to implement corrective actions in the industry managed critical process audit process the corrective action is not done with the auditor the supplier works with the PRI staff engineer to do the corrective action next so the corrective action process is done between the supplier and the PRI staff engineer who is an expert in that particular process so the supplier submits root cause analysis and objective evidence of corrective action for each non conformance now the staff engineer may accept it or they may write back and said i do not think you have addressed the root cause and prompts the supplier to dig deeper in trying to address the root cause and make sure that the corrective actions address the root cause and also the corrective actions have to be implemented and it has to be sustainable before they are accepted once the staff engineer is satisfied it the, the audit package is forwarded to the industry task group who collectively review each non conformance and approves or rejects the supplier's response as i pointed out all issues must be resolved prior to closure of the audit the supplier cannot say i'm going to you know i'll have it fixed next year it will not be accepted sustainable corrective action has to be put in place before the closure of the audit and then the task group the technical experts again here at this point at this point and the audit review process the only task group members that are involved are the OEM technical experts and the CM technical experts the supplier task group members are not involved because they they there's restrictions they can't see a competitor's data so the audit package review as well as the corrective action process the task group members that are involved are only the OEMs and CMs and if the task group votes to accredit the supplier then PRI issues a certification and schedules the next audit usually in 12 months unless the supplier has reached a merit state which takes 3 4 years and at that point the the task group can also decide to fail a supplier if they do not believe that the supplier has uh, put in proper corrective action finally the the whole process is industry managed and you can see that there is oversight for the process at every point the industry oversees the whole process pri's role is just administering on behalf of the industry you can see the oversights at the t at the point of audit criteria development because the industry collectively de decide decides on the audit criteria selection of the auditor is done by the industry technical experts in the task groups once the audit is conducted the industry again takes over but also the industry has the the, the right and the ability to go and observe audit many times and technical expert from an OEM will go and observe an audit to make sure the auditor is doing properly the corrective action process as i said the audit review process is all done by the the industry task group overseen by the done by the staff engineer with the help of the staff engineer they oversee the whole process accreditation decision is from the industry and the process evaluation and improvement happens at the management council level of the industry group that's managing this pro pro program so using those examples of how aerospace can be used to develop a process medical device industry has gotten together and developed a process uh, program called medacred to do exactly that and the the whole goal is to reduce risk to patient and to assure product quality by focusing on critical manufacturing process 
and Medicred is administered by Performance Review Institute, which also administers the NADCAP program, and PRI is a not-for-profit trade association. So what does Medicred do? It brings together the industry OEMs, CMs, and with the help of the suppliers, supply technical experts, streamlines the requirements into one document as opposed to having individual requirements for every manufacturer. Now, there is a possibility if there's something unique that doesn't get into the, the general requirements that you could have a supplemental. That's very rare, but if it's something unique, you can have that. The medical device industry also has agreed to approach process validation through these audit criteria. They're including process validation questions into these audit criteria. So the industry has gotten together and streamlining into one set of requirements as opposed to multiple requirements for all different OEMs. It also helps the OEMs and contract manufacturers see what is happening at the lower tier supply chains. Instead of doing multiple audits, going and auditing every supplier, which is very difficult, that's why they end up auditing only maybe tier ones and occasionally tier twos. This, by getting together and creating an industry managed program, they get to have audits done at all suppliers at various tier levels, some that they wouldn't even know and done by a subject matter expert. This points out to, instead of having individual audits, that they are conducted one audit by an industry expert. The critical manufacturing processes that have been identified and that have been worked on over the last two, three years are given on the left side, cable and wire harness, heat treating, plastics injection molding, printed circuit board assembly, sterilization and, the weld and welding, and the program has conducted audits and is, uh, conducted audits in each area and issued accreditations. Future areas that the industry has identified as the program develops are given on the right side. So what are the benefits that the OEMs and the suppliers see from this program by, by an uh, industry-led initiative for critical processes. OEMs see that it is an opportunity to collaboratively bring consensus industry standards and best practices to all levels of supply chain, depending on wherever the processing is done for these critical processes. They also see that the suppliers that participate in the program are committed to improvements and they could differentiate the ones that are proactive and participate and get accreditation so they can see a differentiation. Third is they have visibility of critical manufacturing process capability at different suppliers at all levels through the audit process and, and the web-based audit management program. The suppliers see improved flow down of requirements, sometimes that they didn't see, so they see the, the they have the better ability to get the, the requirements and they could see reduced OEM audit frequency based on the number of OEMs participating in the program. They also see an advantage by having a subject matter expert conduct a rigorous audit and a rigorous CAPA process that helps them improve their process quality. You know, in effect, the suppliers are getting an expert in the industry spending two to five days in their plant and they get a lot of benefit out of that. Also, the, the whole process, the the preparation, the internal auditing, and the actual audit and the corrective action process help the suppliers improve their process 
discipline which will lead to reduce scrap rework and pro improving product quality. So what can you do if you are a manufacturer or a contract manufacturer or a supplier? You can participate in the program. You can be, if you are a technical person and if you are a supplier in any of these areas, you can participate in the task group. You can influence create a creation of uh, audit criteria. You can help the task group bring issue, issues to uh, a light about your special process areas. Similarly, if you, can, if you are a contract manufacturer or a manufacturer, you can participate in the management council. And there are also supplier voting members that get into the management council. And it's an industry-wide approach. And the program would be most beneficial when there's lots of participation from the suppliers as well as from the contract manufacturers and the, uh, uh, the manufacturers. As you could see, NADCAP has benefited significantly because of the, the breadth it has reached. So the same thing can happen with med medical device industry uh, based on your involvement and participation. So what are we doing? Why are we doing these things? The industry is doing it based on achieving better quality products, less defective products, and ultimately leading to uh, patient safety. So we would encourage you to get involved. And finally, the, the contact information given below if you need to contact any of us to find out any more information. And, and I'd like to, at this point, thank you for listening and thank you for participating in this web, web program. Thank you. Okay, Joe, we're now going to begin the Q&A session. If you have a question, please feel free to submit it using the Q&A panel located at the bottom right of your screen. After typing your questions in the space at the bottom, hit the Send button. Please be sure to direct your questions to all panelists in the Ask menu. Your questions won't be seen by other members of the audience. Um, okay, so it looks like we have a couple that came in already. Um, first off, Joe, could you provide sort of a sampling of the OEMs that are using the Medicred program now? Okay, we've, we've had, when we started the program in, uh, you know, by having a round table to understand whether the, the industry would be interested and benefit from this program, there were 15 companies that participated in that. Uh, since then, there's been active participation by companies like Johnson & Johnson, DePue, um, Philips Healthcare, um, Stryker, Baxter, Beckton Dickinson, uh, Medtronic, Covidian, before they became Medtronic, now they are part of Medtronic, and uh, there's many others that have been, that have been Boston Scientific, uh, then as far as those are the OEMs, then there are suppliers, many suppliers that are participating, and contract manufacturers such, such as Sanmina, Flextronics, um, uh, JBL Nipro. So there's been a lot of participation in task groups, management councils, and uh, in developing audit criteria, and, and including GE Healthcare. Sorry, I forgot to mention GE. Yeah, that certainly sounds like kind of a who's who of the industry. Um, for smaller companies, is it cost prohibitive, or do you, you know, have a lot? Are you are you kind of trying to target small uh, medical device companies as well, or are you sticking mostly to the really large companies? No, we are, we, we are, we, the management council has looked at how we can encourage participation by the smaller manufacturers by creating a, a, a category where they can participate at a much lower subscription fee than the, uh, the, the full uh, large manufacturers. Okay, great. Um, unless we get any more, this is the last question, and this is, can you give some examples of what is looked at in a process audit versus what we see in the quality system audits done by using the QSite um, criteria and by FDA? Yeah. The, the general quality system audit looks at, uh, you know, whether the, 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 the company is providing proper training and they have a quality system, they have a corrective action process and everything else. However, the, the, the special process, critical process audits are focused on the process. They will look at for example, if you take heat treating, 
they will look at the, the furnaces that are used for heat treating, and they will look at pyrometry standards to make sure that the thermocouples are placed in the right places and the right uh, locations are monitored properly so that they can assure that all the parts going through the furnaces are heat treated equally, things like that. And, and they would look at a job and, and follow the job from, for the, throughout the whole process to make sure that the processing is done to meet all the requirements that the purchase order has slowed down to the, the, that supplier. Uh, similarly, if you look at uh, uh, circuit board assemblies, they would, they would look at the tip temperature of the, the soldering irons, they would look at humidity control, uh, they would look at temperature control to meet the industry standards to make sure that all those things. So actually it is, the, it is done in the plant to make sure that all the conditions and the equipment are, are calibrated properly and it's being performed properly. Okay, so it, it's, it's the process that is being audited as opposed to the general quality system.